Hey, what up, YouTube? It's your boy Sean, aka Sean Knight 3000. What's going on with y'all out there in the web land? Anyway, I'm just sitting here, just finished the uh, delivery. Uh, it was to a CVS, so that was interesting. I've only delivered to CVS once before, I think. I think it was once before. So, but it wasn't that one. It was uh, another CBS. Anyway, uh, it was just a little side thing. I had already delivered some food earlier, and I was just out that way when I got pinged again. So, decided to go ahead and scoop that up since I was right there, literally down the street from the restaurant and from the CBS. Run it on down there, make that quick money. Come on back here, wait on the big stuff. Anyway, it is Thursday, almost 11.30 a.m. It is absolutely gorgeous here in the city, beautiful. Today we are earning our name. It is about 78 degrees right now, and it's supposed to go up another few degrees before the end of the day. And this weekend, it is supposed to be scorching. They're talking about Saturday, Sunday, and Monday being in the 90s, so boom. Anyway, uh... What's going on with me? Like I said, every video, just out here making his money, doing my thing, just trying to live, you know? Just trying to live. Nothing special. Uh, got a message from the guy who's thinking about doing security, reply to him. If you're watching this video, hey man, go for it. The summertime is the best time to do security. Why? Because it's warm outside. It's nice outside. You don't have to worry about wearing thermals and walking in snow and slipping on ice. And if your security job happens to be at a location where you're doing perimeter checks every hour or even worse, every half hour, you're out in the elements constantly. And trust me, it is better to do those rounds in the summer than it is in the winter. And it'll give you a good example of what the job is going to entail. So if you decide to keep it, if you decide to stay in security, you'll at least know what to expect when wintertime comes. Uh, and just because you decide to go armed doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be in a position where you're going to be inside a cushy office building all day or a cushy condo complex. Most of those jobs go to unarmed security. That's something that I should have wrote when I wrote you back. Those cushy office positions where you're sitting there with a suit and tie on all day and you got the blazer on, those are almost always unarmed. From what I picked up from you, you want to be an armed officer. There's nothing wrong with that. Most of those jobs are not the ones where you're standing there in a blazer. If you're going armed, you're going to be in the uniform. You're going to be in the police style uniform. And a lot of times those positions are going to involve you at some point during your day being outdoors. Uh, even if it's a bank, uh, they might be, depending on the size of the bank, there might be three or four security officers on duty at the same time at that bank. There's one guy in the parking lot. There might be one guy in the lobby or two guys in the lobby and there might be one guy that's watching the CCTV cameras or just doing a walk around. If you're and they rotate so that one guy might be outdoors for a half hour or so. One guy might be, you know, in the lobby or whatever, whatever. At some point during the day, you're going to be that dude that's outside. If you're working a bank, like I say, depending on the size of the bank. If it's a one officer bank, like one of those little town Andy Griffin style thing banks, you may have to do everything. You may not be able to just stay inside the bank all day. You have to go outside every once in a while. You have to do a perimeter check to make sure that nothing is going on around that bank. Uh, if you're doing armored car, of course you're going to be outdoors. Unless you're the driver you're going to be outdoors because even if you're the, the because if you're the courier the position they call courier because there's three people in an armored car there's the courier there's the guard 
and there's the driver. Always remember that. Now the driver has to have a special license. Here in the States, that's a CDL because those are trucks. They're not vans, they're trucks. And so you have to have a CDL for that. I don't know how it is where you live. If you do have to have a CDL and if you don't have a CDL, you can either be the guard or you can be the courier. And both of those guys, now the guard's job is to stay inside to guard the money in the back of the truck. And the courier is the one who gets out and goes into and out of businesses. Banks, uh, currency exchanges, uh, whatever the, that company that you're going to be working for has a contract with, whatever business that company has a contract with. Uh, if you're working a warehouse, because a lot of warehouses require armed officers. Of course, you're outdoors. Hell, you're outdoors even when you're indoors because if they're moving stuff in or out of the warehouse, the doors are open and that wind is whipping through. And buildings like that, they tend to focus that wind. So even in the summertime, it might be chilly. Take it from somebody who has worked at McCormick Place before, during the conventions. I was there during the setup, I was there during the show, and I was there during the breakdown. Now, the setup is when they're setting up the booths and everything. The show itself is the show, and the breakdown is when they're breaking down all the booths. And trust me, they have those doors open, and that wind is whipping through McCormick Place. McCormick Place is a convention center, just in case you didn't know what that is. And it gets cold, even in the summertime. But you also got to remember that McCormick Place is literally on Lake Michigan. So you have that lake wind coming off as well. You might be someplace that's hot and that good cold wind blowing through that feels wonderful. Imagine that in the wintertime because conventions don't stop when the weather changes. There are some conventions that come through in the wintertime. Do you want to be doing that job in November and December and January? This is the best time to find out. So yeah, go get a security job. If you want to be armed, go through all your due diligence, get licensed, get trained, get your gun, get it registered. That's something that a lot of young, and especially new security officers, tend to overlook. They go out and they get all the training, they go out and get the best, most expensive gun that they can find, and they don't register it. And the first time something happens, the police will take your weapon from you. Yes, they will, because they are within their legal right to take that weapon if it's not registered. That's an illegal firearm. So get your weapon registered. Also, if your company or if where you live, the rule says you can only be armed on the premises, put your weapon in a bag and take it to work with you. Because I don't know where you live, once again, but there are different rules for different places. Uh, here in Chicago, if you qualify to carry a weapon, you can carry a weapon. 24 hours, you can sleep with it if you want to. You make love to the thing, like, you know, Tupac talks about it, and you're my girlfriend. But if you're working in a city that the rule says you can only have your weapon on you while you're on the premises of your job, Carry your weapon in your bag. Don't get caught. Don't get cocky. And you're carrying your, your weapon on your hip. And you're on your way to work. Because that's illegal. Once again, find out. In your city. In your state. Your county. Your province. If you're living in Canada. Can you wear your weapon? To work. From work. Because like I say. Different places have different rules in place. Know what the rules are. That's another thing. Also, if your company decides to send you from your city to another city, know what the rule is. Because some companies will do that, especially if you're armed. You're a rarity and you're special when you're armed. And they may need you to go cover a post in another location. Or they may call you on your off day. So the city you work in, it might be perfectly safe for you to carry and perfectly legal for you to carry to wear your weapon to work. To work with it on you and to wear it home. If they're going to send you to a suburb or something like that, know what the rules are in that particular suburb. Because once again, the rules change from place to place. 
it might be perfectly fine for you to carry that weapon on your hip while you're out and about in your city. You go to a neighboring suburb, suburban cops catch you. That's a crime. So do your due diligence. Like I said, I don't know where you live. I don't know if you're in the States or if you're in Canada. But do your due diligence before you go flipping around like, hey, I'm an armed officer. And the next thing you know, you're thrown up against the back of a squad car. You don't want that. So know what the rules are. Get that weapon registered. Get yourself a lockbox. If you're not familiar with guns and this is your first weapon, when you buy your weapon, you get your holster, you get your ammo, and you get yourself a good lockbox. They're not that hard to find. Usually you can find them in the same place where you get your weapon. Get in the habit of getting to know your weapon and how to disarm your weapon. And by that, I don't mean take the clip out. Okay? Don't forget that there's always going to be one in the chamber too. But what you can do to render that weapon safe is to remove the firing pin. Remove the firing pin. Put your weapon in your lockbox when you get home. Lock it up. That does two things. That renders that weapon incapable of firing. So if somebody comes into your house, steals your weapon, they can't fire it. That's a good thing. They would have to get a brand new firing pin. And nobody's going to sell some random joker a firing pin. It's, well, firing spring, rather. It's just not going to happen. So that's a good thing. Also, when you're at work, this might not be the best advice that I can give you, but it's the safest advice. When you load your weapon to go to work, do not chamber around. That way, if something does happen and you find yourself in a scuffle, because I don't know what kind of holster you're going to get. You may get an old-fashioned leather holster where you can just snap it, pull your weapon, and you're ready to go. Or you may get a high-tech weapon. You may get a high-tech holster that secures that gun in place and you have to do all kinds of twists and turns and things like that to get your weapon out those are the best depending on where you work they're expensive but they're the best depending on where you work because if you find yourself in a fight and it is one-on-one or two-on-one or three-on-one you never know who's going to come running up behind you and, and take a swing at you because you're whooping their boy's ass now all of a sudden you're on the ground, they pull your weapon, now they're ready to shoot. So two things, don't chamber that first round. If something happens where you need to pull your gun and shoot someone, you can always pull it, click. That takes no time whatsoever. Chamber around then and you're ready to go. Don't chamber it and then holster it and walk out the door. Because if something does happen and someone ends up with your weapon, all they need to do now is point and squeeze. Because a lot of times, in addition to holstering that weapon, click, we'll click the safety off. We'll click the safety to the point where, okay, the gun is ready to fire. That's the second thing I wanted to tell you about. Keep that safety on lock. At all times. Like I say, if something happens... 99.9% .9 of armed officers are never in a position where they have to pull their weapon in the line of duty. Your job as a security officer is prevention. That's your job, is to prevent crimes from happening by your very presence. Not to deter, but to prevent, which is a slight difference. Police investigate crimes. They are there to deter criminals. You are there to prevent a crime. So just like 90%, 95% of police officers go their entire career and never pull their weapon in anger. 99.9% .9 of armed officers never have to pull their weapon. But if you check online and you check around, you'll find that a lot of security officers have been shot with their own weapon. You will be in fistfights. A hell of a lot more than you will ever be in gunfights. Okay? Remember that. You will always find yourself 
against somebody whose mouth is running. Just because you have that gun is not going to stop that. In fact, it might make it a little worse because people, oh, you, you think you the shits because you got this little gun on you and this little stinking ass badge. Man, I'll take that gun and whoop you. That happens. Instead of having someone go, oh, he's got a gun. Let me keep my fucking mouth shut. You'll get assholes who now see you with that weapon and it makes them want to challenge you even more. It defies logic. But sometimes people just get overly hyped when they see a security officer. And then they get super hyped when they see you have a gun. Because now, oh, you think you a cop. You ain't no cop. And you run into those assholes from time to time. You'll find yourself using these in your nice stick or whatever kind of stick you got. You may have the old-fashioned wooden billy club. I hate this term, but it kind of fits the old-fashioned nigger beater. That's what Chicago PD used to call it way back when. That's what a lot of police officers used to call it way back when. The nigger beater. Because it was used to club the shit out of black people. Nowadays you can get the baton. Snap it. A little ball at the end. When you get your equipment, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a little weighted metal ball at the end. It's steel. It hurts like a mother. It will crack a skull very 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 easily okay that's down there all right but anyway like i say get to know your equipment don't overspend on anything your weapon your your holster but it's up to you it's up to you how you want to equip yourself how much stuff you want to carry on your belt i suggest the minimal amount of shit it looks real good to outfit your belt with everything under the sun. Eight hours of wearing that, you'll understand what I mean by equip your belt with as little as you need. Your holster, your weapons, some cuffs. Shit, I even, back in the day, I used to carry my cell phone in my pocket, in my up here pocket, my shirt pocket, because I couldn't carry another thing on my belt. Real guns are heavy. And the longer you're walking around with it, the heavier it seems to get. Second, don't overspend a whole lot of money to look like a professional cop. You're not a cop, you're a security officer. Next, like I say, do not chamber that first round. Load your weapon. You don't have to chamber the first round. Keep your safety on. That way if something does happen and you lose a fight and someone gets your gun, think about what they have to do now to shoot you. They got to chamber it, they got to take the safety off, and in the heat of the moment, that gives you time to get up and respond. Get your knife stick, get your pepper spray, whatever you need to do to disarm them before they shoot you. But if everything is just ready to go, bang, 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 you're good and dead. And I don't want to see you get good and dead, okay? So remember those little things. Do not chamber that first round. Keep your safety on. If you have to, get you a very, very expensive holster so that you have to do a whole lot of twisting and turning in order to get your weapon out. It keeps your gun from being taken in a fight. That's what it's for. That's it. That's all I got to say about that. Be careful out there. Watch yourself. Learn the job. Don't be one of these cocky assholes just because you're a security officer and you got that little gun. Protect yourself, but don't be an ass about it. Remember, treat people the way you want to be treated. And go home safe and sound at the end of the day. All right, I'm done. I'm going to go get this money. I'll talk to you guys later. In the meantime, be careful, be safe. Watch out for each other and watch out for yourself. And I'll holler at you later. Peace.